Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pulse Check Podcast. Yo, we got a special one for you today. But before we begin, without further ado, let me introduce everybody. Of course, we got my man J God, we got my boy Ebates, and then possibly first time guest, my boy Destroy. As always, Destroy, he's as our first time guest, I gotta introduce yeah. you right, my man. D, talk to me, man. For those people at home who don't know you, who are you? What do they got to know about you, bro? By the way, this guy has one of the best energies ever out of anybody I've ever met. Amazing human. Destroy, go ahead. The floor is yours, puppy. I love puppy. you, Hector. Thank you. Of course. Well, um, <laughs> been playing COD literally for a super long time. Uh, love competing. Played multiple different games, like competitive. Grew up playing SND, like Search and Destroy. Um, but switched over to Battle Royales when Fortnite came out. And stuff like that really enjoy, always enjoyed cod and then obviously after that bam after fortnite stopped enjoying it for a little bit had my fun on there then warzone came out so i got a little mix of battle royale and cod which i always enjoyed and then bam i, I, love it. I were just competing but yeah okay fun, man love it man chat this this man destroy destroy wait okay uh, not to open up any any wounds right but he <laughs> was you were so nasty at fortnite you, I think you were like 1.2 points off from calling, right? Yeah, from uh, the solo World Cup, I was like uh, uh, 1 point off. That's actually insane. Only, yeah, it was like the only week that 60 points wasn't enough to qualify. You had to get like 62 points or something. Um, and then every other week, 60 points was enough. But that's <sighs> unlucky. Yeah. Just so y'all know, I don't know if y'all remember back in the day how hard it was to qualify for the World Series Wars. I mean, uh, the Fortnite World Cup. And my boy Destroy, were you, would that have made you the only controller player solo to do that? Or was that well, Unknown Army? Aiden, no, Aiden called in duos. Um, As a solo? There was, no, no, no. He called in duos with, uh, with Goshan, I think. At oh, the time. okay, okay. Yeah, so he called in duos. But I don't know if there was, I definitely think there was a couple controller players that called. I know there was like a, a saw he's grinding in the World Series now. Yeah. He was also really close to calling like a point off one of the weeks as well. Um, it's from insane the solo, how competitive that stuff was back then. Yeah, yeah so man. Insane. The end games, the end games had like 50, 60 people, like yeah. super small zone. That it gets really, it gets really crazy with like the builds and stuff. You know, like you can't just get caught out in the open and stuff like that. Like, yeah. you kind of can get away from fights. So it's a little different. Yeah, I mean, bro. Just, so for those of y'all at home watching, just know this man is crazy talented at video games. Um, so yeah, man. All right, let's let's get into it, guys. Today we're gonna be talking about season four completely new new season i a lot of it my opinion has changed um i have not played it yet but i've seen it all today and we you know i know uh all three of y'all played it today so boys mm. what is y'all's opinion on season four how is it good bad um honestly i'll be honest normally after every update i just see everybody in the chat saying it's horrible it's horrible l l like and today was the first time since the game dropped, since the integration, where people were like, yo, this was actually a good update. And nothing was technically broken. Maybe there was like a couple of little bugs, but the game didn't completely break. Uh, but what do y'all think about season four? W update, was it an L? Is it okay? J God, go ahead and go first. Uh, I think it's good overall because they dropped two guns. Both guns are immediately usable, which is 100% a W for both content and then also like for people to re-engage with the game, they brought back the car 98, which is solid for a resurgence. So people could jump back on that. Um, I think the ranked not big map is probably one of the, the L's, but besides that, I think they did a, a bunch of stuff just to kind of get things in the right place with the 120 players. They transitioned that for world series of Warzone. That was a surprise. I think to most people, especially the 80 or six, what is it? 68 through 80 people, yeah. the 12 yeah. teams that got added into the mix. That's a W for those people that didn't even think they were going to qual and now they at least have a chance to group. Yeah. So, so is it like six people per solid. region or no. like six no. and six or just 12 NA? It's 12 NA, 12 EU. Yeah. Nice. We'll go over it right okay. now as whenever yeah. we talk about that and okay. we'll break it all down. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, dude, the start of stream today was nuts. Everybody's going wrong, yeah. like talking about it. Yeah. But, uh, but overall, J God, you think W for the changes? Yeah, 120 I think it's players? a W for it. I, I think, um, they probably have some other plans that they're keen to keep in secret because I think they want to do some shit with like BO6 and they're mm. probably going to wait until after the ninth for them to drop some kind of like bomb on, hey, we're going to do this, you know? I, at least that's what I hope, but we don't know. Right. Okay. 
What about you, Ebates? I know you played a little bit before stream. Um, yeah. What do you think, man? I mean, just playing in general, uh, just, it felt good. I know it kind of sounds bad, but I feel like I always have low expectations for updates because there's always bugs or crashes or whatever, and it seemed like today was pretty minimal, which is super impressive. I'm happy with it. Um, it's also a lot of really cool quality life changes, kind of like the balloon that opens up at when you do a bunker, mm. um, different loot, stuff like that. Um, I know you can buy specialists now, which is sick. Just feels like they're bringing back a lot of like the old things that we used to enjoy as players and kind of just reintroducing it. So, like, you know, similar to last season when they brought back Rebirth Island and stuff like that in the season before Fortune's Keep. So it seems like they're trying to build back off, like back up that core community of called or of Warzone specifically, which I really appreciate. And uh, yeah, overall, just super, ex uh, super excited about the new season and hopefully they can continue to build. Like I said, I think J-God's probably right on that. They're, I feel like they have more that they, they're going to come out with, which is exciting and we could look forward to that. Um, for the rest of the year but yeah no br ranked a little concerning or confusing on that um i understand it though i guess um and i feel like they were already full sent on like resurgence this year so maybe they had like a little yeah. bit of a change of heart like midway through the year but since they already scheduled it it was just kind of hard to like change okay um i'm sure that's happened and that's totally understandable as well so i'm, I'm super happy i think i think we're in a really good space right now also side note it was weird because there was like 20 different playlist updates this morning and then one of the updates all of a sudden there's these dna things on the map like when you kill somebody yeah. or or yeah and it, there's an in-game event going on where you're unlocking stuff with the dna bomb or something and it's like all right why the hell isn't this gassed at all like nobody knew what the hell anything about it so you get some unlocks yeah. from it it's you know what's like funny weird. before before the playlist update came out the dna things weren't dropping every time it was supposed to be a, D a dna thing it was gulag tokens so I hopped on this morning and I opened like I opened four boxes in a row and it was gulag tokens. I said, bro, what the fuck is going on? I was oh like so God. pissed. I literally took a screenshot and tweeted it and then I realized it was a, it was an accident. So I deleted the tweet. Mm. I was so upset about it. I was like, bro, I just got four gulag tokens in four crates. Like, what the fuck are we doing? But I, I realized later it was an, it was an accident. Maybe yeah. that's why everybody said that. <laughs> but destroy, what about you, man? I, I know you played all day today. Uh, a little yeah, bit of a turk uh, competitive, right? But how did it yeah, feel for I you? Yeah, I played a little bit of pubs too and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed using the new car. Like I think always having new guns is is always fun for the game and stuff like that. Um, I would have liked a little more excitement. Like uh, maybe like obviously like Fortnite is a little bit like uh, different when it comes to the updates. You get like a full trailer. You get the the full experience and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. As I said, like uh, Ebates was saying, you kind of have low expectations, but I thought it was pretty cool, like being able to get new guns, try those out, um, the buy station changes and stuff like that. Like even the small stuff like that, I think like as a player could make the game more fun. Like as you were saying earlier on the pod, like you never seen that zone, like that hospital zone mm -hmm. for stuff like that. So if we could have more stuff like that, where it kind of not only for the players creates a different experience, but for the viewers as well. Yeah. Um, I think it can continue to be more fun. So stuff like that, I think it's cool. Like the bunkers, obviously you could uh, get super stacked up, um, stuff like that. I like the quality of life changes. I think they need that. They left one in multiplayer. I don't know if you guys seen like where you get the HUDs of the people and stuff where you can see like how much plates your teammates have yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But they don't have that in the, uh, in the private match just yet. So I think they need to fine tune that just a tad bit like the private match to get rid of obviously like those, those fire semtex where they like yeah. stun you, Molotov you and fucking nature at the same time those are those are pretty insane um and i think that you know like if they fix some of those things obviously uh i think it could be better yeah. okay there, okay there's also two things that probably change that you may have noticed from from playing the game today is uh the gulag did it feel like much different and then do you, do yeah. you notice like a difference at the floor loop yeah i thought that was pretty cool the gulag as well now that they have like four different ones as well so I thought that was pretty cool, like them taking the C4s out of it, which obviously like is just kind of RNG in my book as well. Like if you get a C4 and it's like whoever throws it first, then you kind of just kill them. But I thought that was cool. I like the new guns and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I thought those were pretty cool. The ground loot, I didn't really notice like too much of a big difference since we were playing in the game mode. But I did notice that I was finding like a good amount of like portable uh, buys and stuff like that on the ground yeah. and stuff. Those are definitely feel a lot more common and stuff. Yeah. I mean, bro, I... I, I hear what obviously you guys playing it, right? How did did you guys get specialists today on Big Map? And then did you guys get the boots? How did those feel today? No, I haven't tapped in with the specialists and uh no, we didn't get the boots neither. I haven't uh popped that on, tried that. Okay. Yeah, I was able to I got the boots and the specialists and honestly, bro, they feel incredible. Like oh, I had such a good time. I had such a good time today. And the boots, what's nice about it is cause like in Wars on One to reset your tax sprint, you had a slide cancel. Mm -hmm. In this, you could literally just tax sprint unlimited. And it's kind of nice just not have to like you don't have to like slide cancel or do any like weird you know i know in like modern for two you had to like in 
if you wanted to slide country, you had like slide and ADS and reload at the same time. If you wanted to do something, it's like it's just nice to be able to just sprint without having to do anything yeah. else. And that's like the nice part. So the tax sprints are sick. Hopefully that becomes like a permanent thing. Yep. Honestly, I was saying earlier, I'd love to see where tax sprint just gets taken out and the normal sprint speed just gets increased to like the normal tax sprint speed. That way we don't have that like weird animation where your gun's up in the air. And it, if they just increase the sprint speed, you know, and just all the time, it's just consistent. That'd be awesome. So either way, I mean, either unlimited attack, unlimited attack sprint or just increase the sprint speed to normal tax sprint speed. I'm down for whatever. Um, and yeah. then the specialist felt great. I feel like specialist in this game is actually like, insane like insane like i, I really mean, think about all the perks you have like mountaineer high alert like combat scout i mean it's just it feels so great quick fix tempered i mean you literally feel like a superhero on the map like literally it's it's insane damn i, I feel uh, like i don't know i've tried it and it felt like it would rebirth i guess and it feel back in the day when i got specialist from nakatomi tower and it felt i felt invincible for some reason i mean i don't know if it's rebirth or what I didn't get that same feeling in Rebirth when right. I haven't tried it on Big Map. I com I feel the opposite. I feel like it's not as broken, but I could be absolutely faded. Um, maybe yeah. I just I think like Resolute too. Like you, where you get that mm. sprint speed when someone tags you. It's like it just yeah, it feels great. There's so many like positive yeah. things about specialists. So it's it's a good time. I can't lie, it's a good time. Okay, I actually can't. I'm actually gonna have to help on that. The uh, only way right. to get it though is like a uh, money thirty thousand, right? Yeah. And, uh, what did y'all think like about a, that? Yeah, I wish too much. It's like, yeah, if we're being realistic, like in a real like customer stuff, that's nowhere near reasonable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Obviously, in like pubs and stuff like that, you'll see it. But it'd have been cool to see like maybe one on in one of the bunkers or like one or two like s somewhere random in the bunkers. You know, so like if you did happen to get that little bit RNG in that, but I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't think they're planning on putting it in World Series, are they? I doubt it. I doubt it. It's not in there right now. Stuff like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think it'll be I think in customs and World Series will be removed. Yeah. Right. Um, I do agree I think though that good. it should be ultra rare, like just in pubs, like just to be found. Because then it'd be like that random chase item where you don't expect it, but then like right, when right. you get it, you're like, oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. Or even kind of how Hector said, you know, do an event where, you know, yes. Nakatomi yep. or whatever, and you get to mm -hmm. like, you have to earn it, you know? I feel like that'd be cool. Because like, I think when you used to do a Nakatomi, it'd give you four, right? Yes. And that's, that, so, I, yeah, that's that. how many players, awesome. yeah. Awesome. Right. That's awesome. So there hopefully needs, they do something like that. There needs to be a way to get specialists. Uh, a sure fire way of doing it, right? Like an event to where it creates, because right now we have no superstore. Even then today, we're going to talk about it right now. They added like a, a hot zone, but then it's not labeled on the mini map, right? It, it's, it just have to kind of guess where it's at. Um, yeah. So like there is no, their goal was to create hot zones and make people want to drop on places like superstore, but you can't do that because it's not labeled on the mini map when you're dropping in. Um, at least that's what I read on the patch notes when I did a quick brief. Yeah. It doesn't come out, yeah. right? I didn't see it like when I pulled up the map The map. It's basically like you'll run into a region and you'll get notified that this is a high loot zone, not a hot zone. Right. Right? Yeah. And so it's kind of so. weird. All right. Well, JD, without further ado, can you load up the patch notes and let's kind of go through it together and kind of like quickly, quickly go through it um, and then go from there. So we'll do... Uh, this is it. This is just kind of the, the general overview. We won't really get into this. Let's get into the actual like war zone section of this all. Uh, battle pass. Uh, we can keep going. Uh, war zone right here. All right. So I, my, I'll quickly talk about my, I'm happy with this update, not necessarily because of the content in the update, but I'm going to keep it a buck 50. I thought it was completely chalked for BR. I thought in my head, they don't care about BR anymore with the literally season one, season two, season three, all for re resurgence. That season four would just be that from now on, that's just the way Warzone is going to be. But I think that's why I'm more hyped that BR players are getting love again, even if it's not anything crazy and it's more stuff that we've already had before. Um, I'm still happy about it. So that's kind of where I stand in this. So we'll talk about the big one that we've all been asking for for a long time. And we've said it since day one. 120 player count raised from 100. How does it feel, boys? We said it from the very beginning. They said, oh, we're going to try it out. We think it's going to be too, like, it'll be too much with 120. And in my opinion, like, this should have been what the game started at. 120 should have been what it started at. If Verdansk was 150, we, regardless of all the redeploy things, you can make this 120. Um, but, I mean, Ebates, how did you feel with 120? Um, I, like, I, I think it felt great for pubs specifically. Um, mm. I, I actually really enjoy it. I think that there was a huge, like, missed mark on 
you know, when you land and you there's no teams around you, it's kind of boring. Like I want to fight off rip and then be able to like maintain that, you know, pacing throughout the game at least. Um, so I feel like this just creates a little a better style for all types of players. You know, if you want to if you want to play slow and whatever, you can go land somewhere where nobody lands. But if you want to play fast, you can find where other people land and kind of fight off rip. So I think the 120 bump up was definitely needed for the big map, and I'm glad that we got it. Yeah. Sure. How did you feel? I know you played. You said you played pubs before the tournament, right? Yeah, I played a little bit of pubs. Um, so if this is like a trios, then that's kind of like six more teams added into it. Um, personally, I didn't really feel like a a major major difference. You know, like um in the lobbies, obviously, like in customs, it's gonna feel a little bit different. I feel like when it comes yeah. to like regaining and obviously stuff like that with you know more more teams scattered on the map. But I was like running around and stuff. I didn't really like uh. A little more much of a major difference but okay i do i do th i do like that uh more players is being added because it obviously makes it a more fun experience so yeah i think 120 oh. is solid but you think it could add more like would it potentially okay 130 like would you like to see 130 140 possibly even yeah. 150 yeah i think for obviously for like pubs that would be fun and stuff obviously in the content aspect yeah. of that but i think if it came to competitive having just like 150 people <laughs> on the map, like i think if you die once then like it's pretty much ggs because like Chocolate. people are just going to be everywhere so and I, I and i don't know if the servers can really yeah, handle no. that like you know like with that many people end game so okay. i think like a, i think 120 is cool it should be interesting to see how it plays out in customs um yeah having a couple extra added teams um, yeah, which, and shit. we'll get into it which I, I that's gonna be a big topic today uh but jaygod what do you what did you think about 120 and what you played today didn't notice um, it or I, no 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 i mean i only played uh other stuff to level the gun so i did zombies mm. plunder multiplayer i was doing all kinds of stuff but i, I will say that 120 is kind of interesting just because they cut back on the other stuff of the redeploy mm. so it's kind of like that that's why i think where the general sentiment doesn't feel like that different because even though they added six teams or whatever they made it so that like probably eight to ten teams aren't respawning as often so it's kind right. of like a net even you know so i think that's kind of unfortunate in that sense um and like the landing spots i think in verdansk why it works so well is because if you wanted to land safe, you would just do a stretch drop, right? You right. just go as far as you can, edge of zone, you have plenty of time to loot up and no one's gonna go there. You can see your peripheral when you land. This, I don't know, it's still too soon. Um, what we saw in customs today, it didn't look too different. We had basically around the same numbers with different zones, Yeah. but once we had a quote unquote stacked like zone where we knew it would be multiple levels, it ended kind of around the same. So I don't think it has much of an impact on that side. Okay. All right. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, on this end, for, for my end, I, this is something that I've been wanting for so long and we've been fighting for and giving the feedback and giving the feedback and giving the feedback. So to see it finally uh, come into the game uh, feels awesome. I, it, is it late? Yes. Season four, four seasons in. We have what? I, I, if it's the same as last year, only two more seasons after this. So yeah, um, I would hope that you know next year, if Verdans does come back, they don't give us anything less than 150. Um, because again, sure, there is that that community for resurgence and that love that fast, quick pacing. Um, but at the same time, we there's also that BR community that we don't want a hundred player BR because that makes it too slow, right? We want that fast, quick play style, but in a BR environment to where you're constantly fighting. We still want it to feel like COD. So um, raising the player count just gets a little even more mixy and gives you that same vibe of like, yo, I earned this win because it was 150 players. But at the same time, it's not super slow and you actually get into gun engagement. So I love this and I'm happy to finally get it. But again, wish it was at the beginning of the game. I hope whatever comes next year, it starts off with a really high player count. Um, so yeah, well, let's keep scrolling. Oh, sorry, go ahead. To add to that, just a side note, because yeah. a lot of times people think creators just get whatever the hell they want. <laughs> if if creators did in fact get what they wanted, this was probably the number one most requested thing at COD Next. Mm. Most True. people were just like, it plays too slow, even though it was mostly creators playing, people were backing out of lobbies, trying to get content. Like this was the number one, and it took them what, since August? Yeah. When did it was COD Next? September? Like, yeah. bro, yeah. how long did it take to get this added? Almost a damn year? Like, we don't always get what we want, despite what sometimes people think. So, <laughs> yeah. I will say a lot of the times we, like, there's like, 
maybe little things that we ask for, but the big things, like for example, unlimited tax spin, look at the community response to it. Everybody's already like, this is awesome. It feels amazing. And we, this, like, I don't know why we're having to fight for something so simple, like running. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I feel one day in like five years, we're going to look back and think, oh my God, can you believe they didn't want to let us run? Like, I truly, I feel like that's going to be a thing one day. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But uh, let's continue. We'll keep scrolling. Uh, what are the big ones? Um, map updates. So they added the bunkers and they made them kind of OP as fuck, right? They give you sometimes foresight and then sometimes yep. they, they guarantee you at least one uh, unlimited tax sprint boots and then a bunch of chest with a bunch of shit and then a bunch of like durable gas masks. Durable, right? Yeah, durable gas masks. Okay. So nice. are these dope enough to actually go into, boys? Yes, I think yeah. they're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I went in the one at. Uh, I, I feel like, like a, uh, they're pretty big. There's at, like, there's yeah. a lot of chests in there. Yeah, there's one at like Low Town where you could literally go in from like one spot under the bridge and completely go to like another side of our part of the uh, Low Town. So they're pretty massive. Like yeah. going inside of them, I pretty, you can like get lost in there. And they have a zip <laughs> at the top, so as you can loot it and then yeah. right away get into the action, which I think was a really dope Not decision. Non destructible too. Oh. Even better. Even better. That's oh, what they were that. saying, right? You can't shoot them down. That's what uh, Hisoka was saying. He goes, ah, dumbass, you guys can't shoot it. <laughs> or something like that. Oh, I didn't know that. But, I didn't know that. Because yeah. that's what he was basically saying. So that's kind of cool, too. And, and it was clearly effective. Like, these looting spots clearly changed how people played because today people utilize them. Okay. Like, if they mm, were yeah. a nothing burger, no one would have utilized these. But there were many times we would check in people's early game, and they were landing on these bunkers. So, they're clearly good enough to change your strats on landing strats, which is pretty important. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's keep scrolling. Um, now, we got Gulag. So, we saw, we talked about this in the last podcast, four different variations of Gulag. Again, they should continue to do stuff like this every season. Um, I think, what, what did we have a Gulag before this? I'm trying to remember. That was different. Not the one that we have right now, but the or have we had the same gulag for three seasons? Yeah, same I think gulag? they like changed. They definitely changed like the uh, stair glitch portion of it, where you can't like yeah. stair glitch it on one side. But I don't think there was. Oh no, like... you forgot they added ladders, Hector. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They added two ladders, but this is something that they should be doing every single season. Have different <laughs> variations, um, bro. Like AI that shit. I don't know. Just add different variations to it yeah. and just throw it in, bro. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it, it should feel different than the same thing for three seasons, nine months, whatever that is, right? Um, or two months at a time, so what's six months? Um, okay, so let's scroll down. What else do we got? We got, obviously, modes, buyback, uh, so buyback royale solos or whatever. Um, great mode, in my opinion, boys. You got, I don't know why they haven't brought it to, like, squads. That was a really fun mode back in Verdansk. Uh, I, I remember there was so many records being dropped back in the day, and... I, at least I think it was a fan favorite. Maybe not if they barely bring it back. Um, but W, in my opinion, have you guys tried this at all? Yeah, I played the solo. It's actually a really fun game mode. Yeah. Okay. As you said, I'm surprised though why they didn't bring back the squads. It was really good for like records and stuff like that. Good content. But people love like it, to man. See, yeah, I would like to see them like uh, like to see it fluctuate a little bit, like uh, from solos, duos, you know, quads. Yeah, and just constantly yeah. switch it. In the playlist. Yeah, like they have the other ones as well. That'd be cool to just have that one on rotation mm -hmm. as well. But Okay. Um, all right, let's go down. This is just a playlist. I don't really pay attention too much to this, I'm gonna be honest. Uh <laughs> what is this? Warzone rewards. I have no idea what this is. Jay God, do you know what this is? Yeah. Basically they added those rewards right there. There's you can see there's four re rewards in each category. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you do those specific objectives. You do the loot supply crates and then unlock the next one. By the time you've done the fourth one, that's four separate camos that you can get oh, for shit. spending money in the game cool. or whatever, opening, looting, they're doing contracts related, and then social, doing those specific things, pinging, whatever, and then complete the specific uh, game modes. Oh, um, so four different camos? Four, yeah, four different yeah. right there. So the bottom left, the, the bluish one, that reddish one, whatever the hell that is, and the purplish blue one. Bro, that looks like, this looks like four different colors of like Nebula. Kind of like, yeah. Is that what I, that is? I, nobody has gotten it, obviously, right? That bottom right one looks sick. Yeah, I like it that does, one. yeah. That's, is that Champions? Champions Quest? Yeah. Well, I think some of these you could probably knock out if you were in a squad, like, dedicated to, to crushing that shit. Ooh, these actually look sick. I mean, again, I don't know how they actually look on the guns, but from just a preview, 
They remind me of like dark matter, but just in different colors. Wait, chat's oh, in there mid. You can preview them. You can preview them. Oh, shit. Is it mid chat? Are they mid? Oh, man. Damn it. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. Scroll down. Scroll down. They're all ass. Damn. I was looking at it. Okay. New map. Uh, yo, this was sick. And I feel like, I don't know what happened because this was supposed to be a thing in like season 3.5 or season yeah. 2.5, but Champions Quest contract stealing. This was supposed to be a thing for a long time. And I guess they just never talked about it and they just never brought it out. But finally, Champions Quest, you can steal it. I'm assuming if somebody, you kill somebody, how does this work, J-God? Do you know? I haven't seen it actually used, but you, they basically, as soon as you wipe the team, there's supposed to be uh, like the, the contract drops that you're able to pick up. So that oh. you're the only ones that complete it. I think it'll only drop That's once so though. Sick. But I haven't actually seen it. Um, but I'm sure some of these wind grinders are going to end up in a lobby and go, ha ha, we're stealing this shit. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of hard though. <laughs> it's kind of hard though. Cause if like you kill them and they have gulag, you don't get it. So you have to wait for them to like die without gulag. It's going to be tough. You have to wipe them all. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it would be like, you just finesse it. You snipe that shit because once they plant, like they're going to get ready to plant it or whatever, you know where the nuke spots are because they have fixed locations. You just squad wipe their shit and then you steal it, plant it, and you're done. Like, you don't even got to do all the rest of the, 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 you know what I mean? You don't even have aggro. Like, I don't know. True, but what if they have gulag, if they have gulag it, right? You don't, get, you don't get to steal it. You have to wait for them to come back. I mean, probably. It, it says fully wipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so, but I'm saying late game, ah, oh, well, I don't know. I guess if they're doing a speed run contract, it might be difficult. These nukes are pretty quick. Yeah, like the... A lot of them are super quick. I guess that's why they're we'll see how it plays so out. quick that even yeah. if you do get them, they're going to try and come back for their nuke items, right? You can right, right, you can right. just try, like, just camp the loot, I guess. I want to see what the first yeah, person true. that does this. This will be fucking hilarious. This will be uh, fun. Scroll down, Fabi, scroll down. Uh, what's this? Tax sprint boots. We talked about this pretty much. Uh, they they actually corrected themselves. Correction, do not reduce fall damage, but it gives you yeah. unlimited mm -hmm. tax sprint. You don't have to slide cancel to reset it. It just you're constantly always. You don't have to slide cancel if you don't want to. The only time you have to slide cancel is just in the middle of a gunfight if you want. But again, my opinion, they should just get rid of tax sprint, add regular sprint, and like like eBay said, make the tax or the regular sprint have the same speed as a tax sprint, and just make it unlimited. Yeah. I don't see a reason as to why it, it, we can't sprint or why we get tired uh, of sprinting. You know, I don't know. It's an arcade shooter. Um, and then obviously mm -hmm. specialist perk, uh, in my opinion, these three things are one of the best things that they've added to the game and actually make a big difference is 120 player count, uh, unlimited tax sprint boots and specialist perk pack. I wish specialist perk pack had a better way of getting it instead of 30 K at the buy. Um, but eBay said there's a new contract, right? There's a new, um, in-game event called contractor and basically it doubles the payout for every contract you do. So if you have like a. I grabbed a big game bounty earlier and it was giving me, if we killed the big game bounty, it was going to give me like 12,700 or something. So it'll, it, it's like during a, and it gives you like a pretty generous amount of time to do it. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, it doubles the value of all your contracts when you're doing them. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And then bunker busters, they added them to BR. Eh, I mean, they were cool today. It's, it's something different. Um, it was I feel trolly. They feel super trolly. Destroy, like, did you feel like the they were over here now? felt like they were having fun with them. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, man. We got we got bunker bustered one. They're pretty OP. Like if you have a, if they're on the top of a building. But I really think the like that bunker buster with a mix of those nades, like those fire nades, you could like pretty much break down like any team if you have a good amount of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, because like it completely like gases you and stuff too. So gases yeah. you, and then you could also throw like five thermal bear grenades and shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, and then the utility box, which you know, if Activision's watching this, I would hope that. They don't, they, they do this a lot and I don't know why, but they give resurgence something. I don't know if it's like their test and they see how people like it and then they throw it into BR after. I feel like they should just throw it to both and just see what happens because utility box, that is sick. Like why wasn't that implemented already with when it was added in resurgence last season, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's like one of those things that it's a great, like nobody wants to have to worry about ammo or plates uh, in a BR and so that helps a lot. And I think it should have already been in there. Um, loot hot zones, pretty much designated to hot zones in the map that have great loot or, or and a lot of money and shit like that. But 
The thing is, they do not appear on the TAC map. Rather, they must be discovered. So, huge, huge miss, in my opinion. What do y'all think, boys, by Call of Duty? And the reason being is they're, the goal for this was to create a Superstore-like drop and hot zones. But why would you create something that's a hot zone, but then don't tell you where it's at? <laughs> When what you're you flying, mean? you're supposed in. to intuitively know where it lands, bro. Like, I, I yeah, just, that's that's a huge miss. It, it's it seems very counterproductive. It's like you added something good and then just made it not good. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. I don't know, J God. What do you think? Uh, like we talked about, I think it is very odd. Um, I, I think that there's ways they can improve it. They don't have to just do the hot drop method. They could do it where, like, if you are responding from a gulag, then maybe. This becomes visible to you so then you would have a chance to regain i mean there's other ways to make it so that players can survive better um but this just seems like eh, whatever you probably won't get yeah. hyped about it when it, you come across one I don't know. It, it was something that i personally was like oh shit, i'm down for and then as soon as i read the second bullet i'm like okay never mind i don't care anymore like <laughs> it, it, yeah it's like if it happens cool if it doesn't whatever um and then the runaway train is a public event so each battle royale match will have a 10 percent chance of ending in a runaway train public event during this end game event, the safe wait, wait, the safe zone um, will be the train. Wait, we talked about this. So, like, pretty much, chat, it, it's like a, a jailbreak. The end zone will be <laughs> the train, and train. it'll have a bubble around it, and it'll just keep moving, and that's where the zone will end. Which I guess in theory could be cool. That's fucking sick. That's yeah. fucking sick. I can't lie. Did you play that LTM at all, Destroy? Uh, which one? The the one with the train or the sleigh ride? Which yeah. Is, uh, it was a Christmas one. It was a Christmas yeah. one. I think I played it a little bit. I mean, there was like really low SPMM. So like, even I was able to 1v3. Like I posted That's a clip. Good. I was like, nah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> what D, besides, what D basically said is the LTM wasn't good enough, so he didn't remember. That's basically yeah. what he said. Yeah, <laughs> no. He might not have played it enough. But, <laughs> but basically, yeah, th this was the entire match, pretty much the, the thing followed the train. But this one seems like... Uh, Based off the initial description, that'll be a more of a later zone. So then, basically, if that happens, you should get on the train. Yeah. You're going to have power position. People are going to have to be running, like, to, to keep up with keep the up gas. Keep up with you. Comes, yeah. <laughs> free, free licks. Um, and then they added the Polaris Razor vehicle. Um, I think this is kind of like the Hummer back in Warzone 2, but just a different brand. That's like, they probably make this super OP. I haven't tried it. This shit's probably yeah. broken uh in it's, a good way uh it's it's not as good as i honestly expected yeah, it's really um, I, oh shit it's okay it's three seats so not four kind of weird too but uh, it, it's not bad but don't get me wrong it's not bad but it's i feel like I, they could have easily made it way better okay it should be like a, a hashtag ad they definitely should just made this shit busted damn damn i thought it was gonna fucking be nitrous on it you know what i mean like fuck <laughs> it just <to> do yeah. some... <laughs> all right all right all right scroll down scroll down uh what's this ground loot weapons yo so i heard ground loot is actually gas as fuck is that true that their guns are actually viable now yeah guns are good <laughs> actually viable that's funny yeah there's that... some good there's some good ground loot i was finding like uh fully decked out strikers uh some polymots some good guns with scopes on them and stuff like that yeah see like bro i think i remember ground loot and i think back of like when we had really really good ground loot was back in back in like black ops uh cold war integration and the when you could find ppshs on the floor um like mac 10 so much good ground loot <laughs> back in the day like cold war mp5 that shit was lit like you could actually use you know For like sure. good good guns and stuff so um i don't know man uh i'm glad to see that and i would hope that they continue this into season four season five season six or season five and six um going forward uh, now, gas mask, quality of life. Boys, how... Okay, so three different variations. Can somebody explain this? I honestly can't say. I tried it. <laughs> what is it? Let me see. The gas mask now has... Oh, yeah, I haven't tried that. The manual. Uh, uh, automatic and semi-automatic. I think I just used the automatic one. Yeah, but how does this work? Reason? Ebates, do you know? So... I think right now, if you don't like equip your gas mask automatically, like you know how like I mean, right now in customs for the most part, people are just running around with it on, so it doesn't take a backpack slot. Yeah. But I think if you yeah. have it in your backpack, if you have it on the semi-auto, I think it'll put it on when you get into the gas. But then when you get out of the gas, it won't take it off automatically. It'll like just stay there until you manually take it off. I'm pretty sure. Oh. And then I mean, I'd love for them to just 
take out the stupid blur where you can see your gas mask and just have it where your gas mask is always on. That'd be great. Yeah, um, and it so just comes off about... when you use it. Also, you don't have to. Take it off. <laughs> no, like I, I, I don't know, man. Like I don't really want to see my gas mask when I'm playing. Like I, I don't yeah. know. I just want to play the video game. So I also um, think it should fall off automatically whenever it runs out. Yeah. So that, yeah, that should also be a thing. Don't know why it's not, but uh, I don't know. Um, and then buy station improvement quality of life. Purchase weapons will now drop behind the player to make them easier to distinguish from nearby loot. Not bad. Uh, little things, right? Um, let's keep scrolling. And initial circle. So, boys, did you guys notice this in the customs today? They added one minute from the be very beginning. So instead of the first circle closing in one minute, it now closes in two minutes. So if, I guess they added one minute of time to the game. Did you guys feel that or nah? Um, I didn't really feel a major difference. Okay. In it, but um, I think it's pretty cool. It gives you a little bit more time to like look for a loadout and uh, stuff like that if you need to get like set up early game, you know? Okay. All right. All right. So I um, think for the early game is cool, but like I think later on in the game you don't really notice. Is it only the first zone actually? Yeah. It's only, only first zone. zone. Yeah. Oh yeah, only the first one. Yeah, yeah I don't really. Okay. Initially notice it too much, but I think it's cool to help get t some teams like loot up. Obviously, they want you to go in the bunker a little bit and stuff like that with it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that, bro. Speaking of what you said, we actually talked about that in one of the previous podcasts. Is like the very beginning is so fast that I feel like you don't even have time to land in the corners of the map or anywhere in the outskirts because yeah. it literally closes so fast. Um, yeah. So I mean, maybe this will help a little bit. I remember Verdance, you could land anywhere and still loot up, and then it'll push you out, right? So I don't know. We'll see how kind of that 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 kind of translates, and if they. But I think also one thing that was different in Verdansk is the the zones. You'd have this long window where you could loot, and then when the zone started closing, it'd be a hella fast. Yes, because in in Verdansk, you would, the gas would kill you, like it would actually just cook your shit if you weren't in yeah. car or whatever on some of the zones, right? Right. right but right. I don't feel like in this game that ever happens. Like the storms hitting you like that. Like you ever feel like you can't outrun the gas? Yeah. Nah, uh, most of the time you feel like you can. Like, but I see what you're yeah. saying. Like, I think they modified it so there's that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then they added redeployment weapons. They pretty much make it where players will now respawn from Gulag with updated primary and secondary weapons, which I guess it's just new weapons, right? Um, it is what it is. They actually made those pretty damn good, right, Ebates? What is it? Um, the, the Gulag sorry, weapons. I was, no, you're good. You're good. Oh, it was. Yeah, the Gulag weapons are, are good. There's the. Um, oh, the I've seen the, the BP50, uh, right? And the FJX. That one. Yeah. Yes. No, and then also too. when you spawn back in too, I think you spawn with like a Renetti now instead of that other pistol, which is really yeah. good. So like water fights and, might be insane. Yeah. yeah, the bow. That's the gun. That's the gun too. Oh yeah, the bow. So yeah, that yeah, Renetti like might one. be crazy though. I can't lie. Shit, man. And then we got Gulag loadouts. Wait, I'm just going to fast forward to the C4. Go back up. Uh, One more right there. Uh, C4 has been removed from the Gulag. I just want to say W. w. Thank God yes. that shit was horrible for the, for the first Some three months of the game. Some people said they still saw it in the comments. So really? I don't know if... Maybe it didn't officially go through. Damn. Okay. All well, right. At least um, they have it in here. So they'll probably fix it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then they got updated primary and I'll go back up. Uh, updated primary, secondary gulag loadout weapons. It just kind of changes them a little bit. And then uh, adjusted loadouts and locked and loaded and climb and punishment gulag events. So nothing too crazy. Loot updates. Uh, loot has received a gen. Oh, yeah. This is kind of a big deal. Uh, loot has received a general violence pass. Many items have had their rarity adjusted, making some items more common in ground loot, while other items are exclusively rare in chest. The overall acquisition rate of cash via ground loot and supply boxes have been reduced by 50%. Okay, I will just leave it at that for right now. They reduced pretty much money by 50%. Is that what this is saying? Pretty much, yeah, right? So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is that bad, good? Like, that's kind of... Yeah, Ebates, we were talking about this at the start. When you read through it, it sounds like trash. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I think this is like, I think this is misleading because I don't think it's really as bad as it seems, um, at least from when I played, even just in pubs. But I think this is really misleading. So I, I, I would I would play and kind of see how it feels uh, before just kind of reading this, in my opinion. Okay. All right. And then um, supply boxes, they decrease or increase the frequency um, and then increase the rarity of basic, the rarity of legendary and then the the reusability of rarity so the ones that reset gulag tokens mm -hmm. so because 
And long story short, because they added 120 players, they decreased Gulag tokens, redeploy packs, and redeploy flares. They decreased the chances of getting them. But you guys said they were pretty fucking common, right? Well, yeah, they said you could get them at the buy station right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's two, there's two per buy station. I mean, I don't have a problem with this, honestly. I, I I think it's fine, honestly, in my opinion. I think Gulag tokens are fine in like players and redeploy packs for like pubs and stuff. It's fine. I just okay. think. Yeah. Spawn okay. customs in general were crazy, but like I said, I, I have nothing to complain about now because we have a World Series of Warzone playlist, which is awesome. So yeah, the great, fact that we can the fact that we can separate the two is is amazing. I, we've been asking for that for a while, so I'm glad they yeah. they added that whoever it was. Um, so scroll down. Let's see what else what else is there. Um, buy station inventory. They pretty much just changed the 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 expen how expensive certain things are and added certain like uh the amount you can get of certain things so i think the big ones is gas masks or 2500 or 2000 they add they changed them to 3000 now i believe uh plates went down to 300 um what else what else what else ammo stays utility the same boxes uav yeah Those they added utility hell. boxes but only yeah. two precision strikes two cluster strikes two portal radars two Mosquito and then bunker busters Bro, too. Uh, this might be mean. I can't imagine a world spending two thousand dollars on a supply UAV. Like yeah. you're spending money to like try and go find more loot that like you probably won't even get a return on that. There's no way. Yeah. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so let's they go also down. Also, recently I uh, took out the thing where like uh, if you land with your team, then you get the free three thousand. Yeah, they took that out. Also, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, which would also like give you a free supply UAV as well. So there's a Supply UAVs, I think those are way, way better on resurgence. Yeah. If they yeah. Um, had the loadout crates on Big Map, those would be hella valuable because you could pop one and then literally your teammates could just go run to get their loadouts, you know? They do. Uh, they I think they do have some loadout crates. Yeah, they have loadout crates on uh, Big do? Map. They yeah. do? Yeah. Maybe not in customs then, right, at all? No, not customs, customs. Uh, is not. Yeah, maybe not in the World Series post, but I know the 10K that I played with uh, Smith and uh, DJ, there was a loadout crate. Okay, yeah. they must be hella rare. That then. was before the that was before the World Series like playlist. So yeah, so I wonder what, what it looks like now because I I'm pretty sure those are not in range. Did you open those today? Destroy. Destroy. Mm -hmm. Oh, what Did the loadout crates? Yeah, yeah, you've seen any today? I don't know if today, but yesterday definitely uh, we have okay. one. We had. I don't know if today I got one though. They probably won't be in this playlist just because yeah. I know that's not in rank. So I'm pretty sure it won't be in this one. <laughs> um, scroll down, JD. Uh, so Rebirth Island, late, they pretty much just changed uh, late circle, late game circles. Uh, so they'll have wide, wider variety of locations. I think this is a bug. Um, I believe this is also included in customs or in in pubs because in, in BR because today we saw a crazy amount of new circles and end games that we've never seen before, and we've watched. Yeah. Uh, I would say yeah, I hundreds seven of customs out of the now. eight zones were like different. It was so refreshing, so refreshing. Yeah. And even playing pubs this morning, like I hopped on and I was like, dude, these are like great zones. Like these are so fresh and, re and renewing. Like there was never in like Levin Resort or deep military or like farms. And like we got so many different variety now, I feel like where, you know, zones aren't predictable and it's not, it doesn't feel like, hey, wasn't this the same game? Like you could watch somebody's <laughs> like re replay and be like, Oh, this is like game two, but like because it was the same zone as like game six. You know what I mean? It was like they were just so similar, similar where it just felt like nothing was nothing was the, like different. You know, so it, this will definitely make just the game so much more refreshing. These new zones, in my opinion, felt great today. It's the little shit, man. It's the little shit that they do that makes the game a little like that much better. So this right here, I feel like they should always be changing, or it should be just random where it can literally land anywhere in the map. Um, so I love that. Made that shit feel fucking good. Uh, weapons, new weapons, two weapons. J-God, you kind of want to take over these two? Okay, so your the, the SMG uh, is pretty good all around. I think it has really good base bullet velocity. The recoil is not bad. And it has insane movement if you deck it out for movement. A good players will be able to manage the recoil still. And I think you can have a lot of fun with it. I think it's only drawback, in my opinion, is the 40 round mag. It kills quick enough to be in the conversation of meta. And I think most people will lean into this. That's why we saw so many people using it today. So I think this yeah. one's really good. Car 98, one-shot sniper range. Snipers will probably love it. I think it's better for a small map in general because the, the longest one-shot range is 86 meters with wow. fully kitted for range. So that's fun for resurgence because like 90% of your engagements will probably be within that. But in big map, less likely unless you're just super aggro 
like a metaphor where he's just going to push everything blindly and whatever. It's going to be within 86 meters, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's how the two new weapons. Good thing they're both good. Okay. All right. So let's scroll down through aftermarket parks. We're going to go through this quickly. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, they got the Har Harbinger kit, which is an M4 assault rifle. Uh, pretty much turns it into a 50 cal uh, AR. Uh, slow fire rate, horrible bullet velocity, but it has hella recoil. The Jack Gunslinger. Uh, this is like uh, the Basilisk, Basilisk handgun. And what does this do? It it allows the revolver to hold eight rounds of three point or point three five seven ammunition with increase in fire rate and instantaneous trigger action. The Volk, the KV inhibitor sniper. What does this do? Oh, this adds a two round burst to it. Um, keep going. The <laughs> Some of these are just like yeah. they're probably cool in zombies. Could be cool in multiplayer. Um, very seldom are these like oh my god in Warzone, right? But yeah. they the men like have the, their bucket I like that they where they're do gonna these. fit. Yeah, 100%. I like where they do these that that they're fun and different, and you can try it. But they're not like broken, busted, and whatever. Like I I do like I do like that. So I do like that uh, decimator one. That one could be a little cool. So I was about to say these two, the last two are the ones that I kind of want to highlight. So the Requiem yep. uh, is, or Keem, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is Requiem. Cast Requiem. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Cast Off 762 boys. So pretty much what this does, it's, I don't know if anybody's tried it yet, but it it's a conversion kit that gives you literally zero vertical recoil. And in the, what this does is you can put on any movement attachments on this, anything. Anything that can, w initially would make the vertical recoil higher, and if you put this on, it will have zero vertical recoil. But it probably will still have horizontal. This one won't be available to like week six or seven. So oh, so it's not right. It, it's not be, here yet. No, only the first one's available. Oh, that was th th today is weekly. So this one won't be available until then. I think they preemptively buff this so that maybe people can experiment with this beforehand. So maybe I don't know. But they did buff this gun. Maybe to account for this? I don't know. But like we talked about earlier when we were doing the watch party, it really depends on what attachments are available after the fact because we've seen pretty m a lot of these aftermarket parts where four out of the six attachments the slots are basically blocked out. You can't yeah. change the barrel. You can't change the muzzle. can't change the under barrel. can't change the ammo. can't change the mag. It's like, all right, cool. I'll just use the stock and it's trash bullet velocity. It's like, what's the point? But yeah. hopefully they don't, they don't fall down that road. Okay. And then, I mean, look, this other one, which I wish would have been a thing in Warzone 2, uh, but the Lockman Shroud, it's a conversion kit that pretty much makes it automatic. And that gun was pretty good off rip, but it just sucked because it was a three-round burst sub. And has there ever been a three-round sub that I was actually meta? Uh, no, but there is a sneaky one that got buffed today, Wait, oh. which is the conversion kit on the rival. It's actually kind of weird because the TTK is okay up close, it has a thousand bullet velocity. Its TTK is faster than the LSW. Wait, wait, a sub? Yeah, the Jack Rival. Uh, has it's a weird. thousand bullet velocity? Yes. It's really weird. It's only vertical recoil, so if you pull down, but it's aggressive, it can be aggressive like after like four burst, like it feels more aggressive, but it kills quick. Okay, well, chat. So maybe it'll be like a good sniper support or something. It's kind of a gimmicky gun until I see a good player use it, right? So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's go through. Let's go through. Uh, and, and then this is a, a Renetti. Uh, it, what does it do? Uh, a single shot weapon. Okay. And then okay. weapon adjustments. Jay God, if you want to take this over, you don't have to go through everything, right? Yep. But you can kind of just give us a It didn't really change. I mean, they slowed it the hell down, but it's still going to kill just as fast as a rifle or the conversion kit. You can go ahead and go to the next one. The bow, not really much of a difference. It still kills kind of slow. The biggest problem with this one is that little weird shaking recoil. So until they fix that, people won't really use that at long range as a long range option. Holger 556, uh, people are saying they like it, but I didn't really see anyone try it today. So I don't know if that's the case. SVA got kind of a more significant nerf. They kind of balanced it out. So the TTK is a little bit more consistent because of the headshot multiplier got lowered. It's, it's going to basically have a slightly... It's going to be more the chest TTK without that headshot involved that much okay. because of the way they changed it. MCW, not enough. Uh, yeah. They need to buff it again. It's still kind of trash at range, even okay. though it's no recoil. MTZ556, okay. Uh, it still has a small mag. And 
I don't think I don't think the bullet velocity is good, right? Cast off seven six two kills still kind of slow, even though they went around and buffed it multiple ways. Um, so not really significant, but maybe once we introduce the other aftermarket part, it, it could be it could be good. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah. Chimera, nothing burger. No one's gonna use that. And then um, <laughs> the hemlock still kind of trash. I think at the furthest range. But I think because of its uh, like low recoil, people might enjoy it within 50 meters or whatever. So it could be like a content gun for resurgence. Okay. AMR actually did get buffed enough where it, it's viable, but still slow sprint to fire time. It's probably going to get outgunned by the uh, base striker, the WSP9, the new whatever the hell it's called, 40, 46 or whatever the new SMG is. The Horus, pretty good. Uh, I think... Uh, this one, they kind of overhauled it. It was already a fast killer before, but they buffed out the range. So if you stack the range a little bit, still only 48 bullets though. And you bleed through bullets pretty quick. So if you miss, it could be unforgiving in the sense that you like, you have to stop to reload. But I think good gun. Okay. Rival nine, this is the one I was talking about. Oh, right there I see. So hella weird with the conversion kit because they upped the fire rate by like 15%, 20%. So it fires a lot faster. But they didn't change the damage, so. Yeah, I mean, the, the, is the increase in fire rate? Did that does that help it a lot or not? Not really. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a big fucking increase. It's kind of a weird gimmicky gun. I think somebody's gonna pull it off, drop a thirty-five, whatever, on resurgence. It'll be fun, and it, it'll be like, oh shit, that's cool. But you wouldn't use it competitively. Okay. All right. All right. Striker nine. This one got a stealth nerf. True Game Data tweeted about it. Uh, there's it's max damage also got decreased and nerfed oh. and it's medium damage or mid damage also got nerfed which isn't stated here so they stealth changed it and the gun's kind of trash now okay yeah people were using it today shit well they switched off of it after shortly yeah right, what did yeah. you use destroy today yeah i was using i think the striker for a game or two then i used a new smg for a little bit yeah they, it went through the meta tweet you know it's like that it's just how uh, it was. did you feel like it was ass destroy the striker uh, I think it's okay still. I know the DG is uh, still pretty good. I think. Yeah, the uh, DG is for sure good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go down. Watch my damn. They changed a lot of guns. What the fuck? This one mostly about the same. All right. So not even not even changing anything. Okay. You can scroll, yeah. and then DG nothing really. Right. Kinda. Bullet velocity. The, it, it did get slight nerf, but it's it's still better than what other options are. It's not like you're going to just shift over to, it's not like something magically became amazing that you're going to switch to. So okay. it's still the best of what's available. Hmm. The Holger, I don't know. That doesn't seem like a significant enough right. difference. <laughs> Point one. <laughs> XRK Stalker. And they did this so I think people move over to the Car 98 for fun. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then Warzone rank play. Let's talk about it, chat. Um, long story short, I'm be honest, I'm gonna read this. Or I read this and I instantly said, okay, I'm not gonna get my hopes up. So pretty much without reading it and, and, and long story short, they said they want to bring back BR ranked at the end of this year. The only thing is they cannot guarantee us a time frame. Um I personally, in my brain, I'm just like, okay, it's not coming back. Like this, like it is what it is. I, I I'm already, they don't even get rid of the hackers in ranked in the top 250, which is insane because the number one player literally is like in charge of bot lobbies for ranked. So I'm not, I kind of just, I don't know. Um, but in my brain, BR ranked will not come till next year. That's what I think. I disagree. Okay. I think they kind of have to bring it and it's either going to be season five or season six. Not saying it's going to be good or it's going to be like different. I don't know what re they're going to come. It's going to be the exact same thing we had. It's going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't get it. But I feel like they're committing to season five or season six. Yeah. I mean, but I, think I don't know that what this verbiage is, is giving me is that they're aiming to do it by season five, but if they don't have enough time to actually like get the rules right and all that stuff, and they're going to do it season six. That's what this is telling me. Uh, I don't know. The short, are you still playing resurgence ranked? Nah, uh, bro, I don't really. I got kind of bored of it last season. Like, I didn't really enjoy, like, that the, every single game felt super repetitive, you know? Yeah. Just, like, the whole game, you, you just explore the whole map every game, you know? Yeah. Like, it kind of gets boring to me. 
I like the feel of like, you know, Big Map, at least there's probably some spots you won't touch, you know, like switches the zones up and stuff like that. But Rebirth just kind of feels really repetitive. And as you said, like, Ankyo was like in first and then someone took over it and nothing really happens about it. So yeah, it's pretty whack in that aspect. Yeah, don't yeah. know what they're doing over there. And then for like this I, year, um, no, go ahead, go ahead, D. They gave like a only like a blueprint this season or something for <laughs> top two fifty rewards. Not even like a camo, like a blueprint, an actual blueprint for a gun, like the Ram Nine or something. We're talking about the Ram Nine know. slaps, dog. <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. I was saying, D. I'm like that Ram Nine better be bussing next season, bro. Yeah. Like that better be the best SMG in the game if they're if they're really yeah. doing it as a blueprint. Um, yeah. I could see them doing a season five and a half, um, even for uh, for ranked, because I think they did it the first season of of ranked BR, right? Where they put it in the mid season, like three and a half, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see them doing a half season for for season five and a half, and then going from there if they can't commit to it season five. But we'll see. Okay, well, again, in my brain, um, in my brain, I uh, I don't like, I don't see them doing it. And they might, but even then, I don't think they could do a half season because they're already going to, like, do, they're already kind of, they can't stop a resurgence half se half way, right? You know what I'm saying? No, no. Yeah. but what he's saying is, like, season five would start, and then they'd be like, no ranked this season until the midseason, and then uh, when the midseason comes, then it would come. So they I would see. just, yeah. half a season wouldn't have ranked. I see. Yeah, I see. Uh, Which that's pl possible, too. Okay. All right. Let's 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 scroll down. Let's scroll down. Mo pills. You're fucking insane, bro. Thank you, bro. Uh, sorry. I needed to say oh, that. Yeah. I know. I know we're filming a video, but holy shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So we have uh, the the rank rewards, which we talked about. <laughs> um, dirt, dirt. Honestly, bro. I'm not being petty. Yeah, I, don't nice. wanna, I don't even want. I don't even want to like hear this shit, bro. Uh, I'm tired of research, bro. I don't want to be rude. Like I don't want to be rude, but it's yeah, it's pretty bad. I I just, rude, I, I'm, but... I'm not a huge fan of like blueprints, bro. I, I really do think camos should be universal, and I don't know why we we limit ourselves. I get it for money, maybe, but maybe for things that we you know earn or have to like work towards. I, I wish it wasn't a blueprint. I understand camo or blueprints in the store because they want to sell, and I understand that. But if it's you know something that we have to earn, I don't want a blueprint. I just you know make the camo universal, and I can put it on any gun I want. Yeah, honestly, again, I just I feel like. I'm burnt out of resurgence already. Uh, doing it for three seasons, even grinding for top two fifty, and then just like, I don't know, I missed my BR. Um, so seeing all this, I'm like, okay, have ranked. It's not competitive, but have it. We'll be over here grinding full tiers of Warzone. Um, I still definitely will dabble if I'm trying to get like level up weapons in resurgence, and I think it has its place. Uh, but again, we've talked about it so many times. R ranked is not resurgence's place. It, resurgence has its place as like that playground that like you know fun non-stop action just kind of like kind of just get home and just play brainless kind of just go right um and it has its community for that it has its place but that is not what ranked is and i don't think that's what ranked should be which we've already talked about i don't want to drive it into the dirt you know but um yeah they changed a couple things from the sr system uh now first place will receive 125 sr and then um iridescent deployment fees reduced by five sr so you know, it, it was pretty bad. Um, match stats. They, all, all this is quality of life that they did. That they changed a couple things. Um, third person parachute squad widget, which I think I do think is really cool. The widgets that they added uh, destroyed. By the way, I know you said it didn't transfer to customs, but I think it's because you didn't reset your game. Uh, because some people uh, had it today, um, the whole tournament, and then some people didn't. And I think it was just whoever like lagged out or the game crashed, and it loaded back up, and then it was there. So probably tomorrow you'll see it um, in whatever customs. And then contract timer, they now have a timer for the bar. And then just a bunch of bug fixes, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for the patch notes. Um, I was trying to get through that as fast as possible uh, because the, there was only a couple big things, two to three big things. But I, I feel like a lot of people in the chat are waiting for this section. I've This is the part that I really wanted to talk about. And a big reason why Destroy is here today uh, is World Series of Warzone just announced some big fucking changes. And I want to talk about it, boys. Feel free to yap. Feel free to say whatever y'all feel about this. Um, destroy. I want to hear from you, man. Out of nowhere, we had qualifiers Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, you know, everybody was down bad because they didn't qual from 69th place and up. And then 
all of a sudden, today, Wednesday, two days later, they announce a complete change in the system to competitive war zone and how you qualify. And they pretty much added 20 people more to every single custom game going forward, which is a big fucking deal and changes a lot on the qualifying system and how the matches feel. Um, Destroy, talk to me. What is your thoughts when you woke up today? Were you kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Or were you kind of like, wait, what the fuck? How is this going to make the lobbies change and how is it going to feel? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, obviously for the teams that were on the edge and stuff like that, obviously, like, it's good for them, you know? I mean, some of them probably, like, got, like, after 68, 69 through whatever it is, like, 84 and probably, like, stopped playing with their team and shit like that. Now that they didn't qual and stuff, now they got to hit them back up. Like, <laughs> let's go. We got some fucking customs to grind. And if I was some one of those teams, man, I'd be trying to get as much practice in as I can because, obviously, like, it's out of nowhere. It's unexpected, but... It's another opportunity for them, you know, like if you are one of those teams in between that, I think it's cool if you can make some noise like with something that just came randomly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, bro, imagine like imagine this. Imagine a team doesn't call and they lose full and they start talking shit to each other because they didn't call. <laughs> I'm and sure then, that happened. Then, I'm sure. And then now they're calling, right? So yeah. chat. So let's quickly go over this. Um, there's a lot of things that changed pretty much. Lobbies now went from 100 players to... 120 and that is a very fucking big deal um and it's gonna make the whole game all of custom games play very different I, we played it today uh boys what did you think about the way it played I, I thought it was gonna be a lot more chaotic and a lot more third parties it kind of felt like it played slower am i baited for that it felt like the games played super slow uh or and even then it almost felt like there was less teams in end game but maybe that was just the first two to three games and then people adapted or I don't know what it was, but it did feel like end games weren't as hectic until maybe four or five, six games into the tournament. Uh, what do y'all think? Um, so I think there's two ways like to, to see if I, at least are just giving my, my raw opinion on, on how I felt it played. I thought it did play a little slow. I do agree with you, Hector. And I think that, you know, maybe it was just a, a change of pace for a lot of people, but I do think there's a couple ways to look at this. I think one, I think it's I think it's good from a competitive standpoint because teams have to play a lot more disciplined. I I've hopped in like some of these big customs, you know, the 10Ks and stuff, and it feels like the the map itself is super forgiving, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I do think it it rewards teams that are a little like just not disciplined at times. You know, you could die and just be able to land anywhere, and most of the time there's not people in a building or late game people are rotating and the buildings just open randomly, so. I think it'll it'll reward the teams that are a little bit more disciplined, not dying as much. Um, it'll it'll give a little bit of an edge to those teams, you know, just the better teams in my opinion. So I think from a competitive standpoint, I think it's good. Um, from a viewership aspect, I think it'll slow things a lot down more. Um, I think people are going to be rotating early, holding buildings a little bit more, dying less, so less kills on the map. Um, even though there are more players, I think just people are going to have to adapt and just rotate quicker, you know, because now, like I was saying, if you're rotating endgame, some buildings are just open. They're just open randomly. I've noticed that playing and just like, oh, like this building's just open for some reason. Yeah. Or I felt like Warzone 2, it wasn't like that at all. Like most buildings you looked at, you're like, this is full. It's yeah. it's a full building. And if we rotate it late, we're fucked. So I think there's like the two ways to look at it. And hopefully, I mean, things just continue to speed up. Like I said, it, you know, maybe just it was day one, 120 players, people were just kind of tripping on it. So maybe things speed up again and we'll, we'll be good. But I think that's like from what I took away today from watching, um, that's what it feels like. It feels like even though there are 20 more players on the map, it probably slowed down things where there's less kills, in my opinion. Okay. What, what, Destroy, I mean, you played all day today, what, 10 games, right? Nine games. How did yeah. you feel with 120 uh, competitively? Um, did you, do you like the change or do you not like the change? Um, to be honest, as I said earlier, like I don't really feel a major, major difference in it. Mm. But I do think like as it goes on a little bit more and more teams start understanding that, there may actually be like a couple more penalties for like dying and trying to regain and stuff like that. Um, that strategies will change. But as of right now, it kind of felt like similar uh, play styles uh, than what it has been. But like down the road, I could definitely uh, see teams playing a little, like a little bit different, obviously, because they don't want to die. And, you know, like some spots may uh, be taken and stuff like that. But as Ebates was saying, like most of the time, like right now in the game, like, you could really just go center and like find a building like yeah it's not really like 
like teams like always rotating early but if it was one like now that there's 120 players you may start to see a little shift in that you know like hopefully some teams figure they got to rotate early because with 120 players if the lobbies are healthy and you're not rotating early then you're going to be definitely part of the grief you know yeah so. yeah okay yeah and um to add on to what d was saying i think the uh, the result of you know more teams on the on the map is we're going to see a lot of solos and duos on the map because because there are more teams more areas are covered rather than you know there's a three man here and then like a three man over here but now that there's more there could be like a three man here and then like a, a solo here and then like a solo over here so since there's more teams kind of in the mix it might be harder to hit buy stations kind of like what i was talking about like i just feel like the teams that are more disciplined dying less are probably gonna be rewarded more um but we'll be seeing a lot of like less regaining and teams probably be struggling a lot more to get their teammates back if they are dying because there are like the solos and the duos that are kind of just straggling um just yeah. making things a lot harder so um i think that's another big change that People not right might not really see right now, but I think it'll definitely be noticeable. And I think we noticed a little bit today. There was a lot of like players alive, but like not or, uh, and like and a lot of teams. Like there was like uh, you could tell there was a lot of solos. It was like twenty seven teams, but like sixty players or something. So there was like a lot of players missing yep. with a lot of teams, like high amount of teams. So a lot of solos, a lot of duos. I feel like we're just gonna see a lot of regains that uh, teams might be struggling with. Yeah, I mean, bro. We'll Look, I, 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 today's the first day. We're going to run scrims tomorrow with 120 players and Friday, Sunday, and then obviously next week, group start. So we'll see how it actually plays out. And I, I can't really give an opinion. It did feel a little bit slower today um, in terms of kills, and it, it felt slow, but then it also felt like there wasn't a lot of teams endgame. So we'll see how it plays out as teams adapt. And then next week is the true testament of how things are actually going to play out, right? Because it's group stages and there's money on the line, there's qualifications on the line. Um, so let's go ahead and bring up the... Go ahead, Jacob. Uh, uh, um, I, I think there's a lot of variables that played into it. I think that uh, some people are using the scrims specifically to practice specific strats where they're going to land. Uh, especially with the format, it's a little bit different than, than we had previously where we know, okay, we're going to have five maps. These are the teams that we're running with and this is where their landing spots are. With the round robin format, you're going to have five games that are completely different than the next five games, then completely different than the next five games. So I, I think I don't, maybe I'm thinking five head where I'm thinking that far ahead. Like that's how I would be kind of strategizing. Like, all right, where are we going to land? Because if there's three teams in this lobby that like to land this spot, that might not be the good one. And there's people that may be experimenting more. I think that's part of it. I think with the zones, because they were a little bit more random today, there was a little bit less predictability where like uh, Destroy said that, hey, maybe... You know, they're not rotating as early. You could have rotated early for free, but like right. maybe not as many teams are doing that because maybe they're like, oh, what the hell? It, it, it's not, it didn't go where I thought it was going to go. And now right. I'm having a bad rotation. So I, I think there's a little bit of that played into it. Maybe t different team dynamics. Maybe they're trying different things with the meta shifting. Like halfway through, he said he switched loadouts. Um, at least when it came to close range. So I think there's probably people that were doing that as well. I mean, there's a lot of dominoes that I think and the one zone where we got where we expected it to be stacked it was stacked there was 35 40 people in that last zone so yeah. i think there's a lot of variables um if you know i was one of those teams i'd be really looking at that because when you do that round robin format you really gonna want to have multiple options because shit could be chalked if four teams are landing there right right or whatever the hell it is yeah I, so that, i don't know I, you actually bring up a good point. I think a lot of these teams practicing customs, and we've seen Diaz and them do this too, is teams should be practicing four different spots, five different landing spots, and just see, okay, what what are different? Like, honestly, if you qualified, I see no reason why you shouldn't want to grind every single day. Maybe content, sure, like that could take a couple of days out of the week, take priority, right? For, for the most part, if you're not posting content every day, like, you should want to get into these scrims every single day and try to improve as much as you can because I, I, I don't want to say everything, everybody's back at zero. No, it's not like that. But 120 is 120, and that does make g games feel differently. And it, you, it kind of brings people down. Like, let's say people were this far ahead of everybody, right? Now with the 120, maybe it's like this far ahead now. And, you know, you can catch up a little bit easier because the games are going to play different, right? Um, so, but... For, for the final kind of section of the pod, um, let's go ahead and go over the qualification stuff for uh, the World Series of Warzone and how everything's going to change. Um, so, um, long story short, is it went today from 68 teams that qualified to 80. I, that's kind of 
that's kind of fucking nuts. Uh, yeah. 80 out of nowhere, and there is no other way to qualify. It's just if you placed in the top 80, this is where you're at now. Um, and you're in. You're in. So, again, I, I'll run through it really fast. Uh, 80 divided by 4 is 20 each team. From there, top 20 or top 40 from the group stages go to upper bracket. Bottom 40 go to losers, bra losers bracket. In losers round one, those 40 battle it out. The bottom 20 are eliminated. They can no longer go to land. Top 20 move on to losers round two. From there, upper bracket or winners round one plays in their top 40. The bottom 20 go to losers round two. The top 20 go to the finals of the, the qualifiers. Then um, losers round two, top 20 go uh, to finals as well. And then the bottom eight get eliminated completely. But then the bottom 21st through 32nd move on to last chance qualifiers. Then in the finals, the top 12 in the final lobby automatically punch their ticket into land. And then bottom 28 will uh, join the 21st through 32nd of losers round two in a last chance qualifier. And from there, the top four teams in the tournament of six games qualify for land. And then there will be a one solo YOLO or trio YOLO game to determine the last team that qualifies for the global land. And um, boys, what do y'all think about this? Everything's kind of a little bit different. What do you guys think about the qualification system as far as the additions of how many teams? So real quick side note for those of y'all who don't know, APEC, Latin America South, and Latin America, Latin America North, they have the exact same number of teams qualified, even with the addition of seven more teams or six more teams. Um, so pretty much before it was 14 teams from NA, 14 teams from NA, EMEA, now it's 17 teams from North America, 17 teams from EMEA. In my opinion, I'm going to say this. I know I'm going to piss people off, and that's fine, but I'm just going to be blunt. The way Apex does it is they, depending on the strength of the teams from a certain region, determines how many people get spots for the next LAN or, or for the next year, right? So if somebody from uh, APAC wins, they get more spots for the next qualifiers. I think NA should keep the 17 spots like with this, but in my opinion, EU or EMEA should not get <laughs> 17. EMEA should keep their 14, and then APAC should get two, Latin America should get three, and Lat or Latin America South should get three, Latin America North should get four. So those three spots that were added to EMEA, I think they should have gone to APEC, Latin America South, and Latin America North. Uh, that's I agree my opinion because of the law the, the difficulty and skill and we've heard it before every single eu player will tell you this there is not good competition in eu right now there is two to three teams that are at the top and are good and after that the fall off is bad and i'm just keeping it a buck 50 this is not even just me saying this these are own competitors from europe saying the exact same thing yeah um, europe competitors so. in, the, in the group chat were saying that I do agree with that. And I think I think Latin America North, like they showed up at World Series last year, I'm pretty sure. Like Deuce Amir and them got fourth. Yeah. Right. And then um I think Rodrigo and them were also Latin America. They got like twelfth or thirteenth or something. I don't they did pretty good too. Yeah, like, they're good. Like with the, the limited amount of spots that they got last year, they showed up. So I do agree with you. I think uh, NA, you know, the seventeen is cool, and then just take the EMEA ones and just give it to the those guys. I feel like Australia, obviously we have a few teams that came over from Australia, like OBS. And Tini, who came over from Australia, so they're mm. going to be competing in North America, and then um, um, as well as Levi, Limax, and Zeppa, who are in North America. But I still do think that if they didn't come over, like only one team qualifying from Australia would have been insane. So I do yeah. think that Australia deserved at least two. Yeah, I mean, Detroit, what do you think about kind of the distribution of teams? Yeah, I mean, as you said, like uh, it would be cool to see like uh, whatever team, like uh, whatever region wins like World Series, uh, they get. They get like the extra spots and then the other ones kind of split it off a little bit more like you said uh since na won it you feel like they should have uh obviously kept the spots and then the other one should switch it up like it shouldn't really be the same as uh eu and na but yeah i think it's rough for like one trio if you just live in like abac or latham south like two trios man i'm sure there's a ton of talent there so it's gonna it's be hard. tough it's gonna even be if tough there's not yeah. a ton there's at least two or three teams maybe. that are great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, so to duke it out for like one or two spots. It's uh, kind of yeah. crazy. 
I mean, I, I want I want chat to to kind of remember this. We're not talking about, and even everybody, probably the comments are going to say the same thing. We're not talking about lobbies. We know you guys go into lobbies and EU lobbies. I, you guys always say they're crazy. Again, we're not talking about lobbies. We're talking about the top of the top percentile. The top teams in EU, there's only like three good EU teams. And after that, the fall off is crazy. And this is commonly known. All the pro players or all the, the top EU players always say this. The competition over there is not as high as NA. There is 17 good teams in NA. I'm sorry. There is not 17 good teams in EU. Like, there 12, <laughs> 12 teams. If, that, if it's say that 12 or, or 14, that's more than enough for EU to where the top teams will qualify. Like, there's no way Enkyo, Gramlock, and them don't qualify with 14 spots. There's no way. Like, 100%. you're just giving room for more people, more mid tier teams to come in from EU as opposed to like Latin America South, Latin America North, even APAC where you give them one more spot and they could shine. Uh, again, I know some yeah. people are going to be pissed about that, but I'm just being blunt. I'm being honest. Until we see EU teams step it up and be better and continue to thrive and win on land and place average placements are better on land, they will get more spots. Uh, but as of right now, from what we know, it's not it's not like that, you know? Uh, I mean, so, even last year, like, looking at the teams that didn't qualify from NA, I mean, mm -hmm. we didn't have Scum in on land, we didn't have Unrational on land, we didn't have Prospect on land, we didn't have Foreign Jace on land, Autorized on land. Like, we had so many top players who did not qualify, and it was just such a, like, disservice to, like, the competitive scene. I was like, damn. Like, those players all deserve to be on land. And granted, they had their chance to qualify, I'm not saying that, but because the spots were so limited um, to where I felt like, NA was more competitive last year, and you know right. there was definitely going to be some teams left out. So, at the end of the day, everyone had their chance to qualify, so there's no excuses. But right. there were a lot of really good players from NA that were left at home. Where I feel like EU had like Fuzzin's team, and then maybe one else, but that was like about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, they did. They were, yeah, that, I think Fuzzin's team was the only team that I was like, damn, you know, who yeah, didn't qualify. Yeah. Uh, but again, I know some people are going to be butthurt about that. I completely understand. You guys are from EMEA, and you guys are priding your guys is you know, where you guys are from. I completely get it. Our job is to be blunt and be honest with y'all. And again, until the placements rise from EU or EMEA, I don't see them getting more spots. If EU wins the World Series of Warzone this year, EMEA, they should get more spots. That's just the way it should work um, going forward. And technically that is what they did this year, kind of, if you want, we want to say that, like they come, instead of taking away spots from EU, they just added... Uh, Middle East um, into it. So it's uh, Europe, Middle East, and uh, South, what is it? Uh, Africa. Africa into it as well. So they just combined it and gave them the same amount of spots. So technically, they got less, if that makes sense. Yeah. Less spots. But um, I mean, going back, so oh, sorry to cut you off, Hector. No, no, you're um, good, you're good. Going back on like the whole format, like in general, I, I think they did a really good job, like in my opinion, whoever did this. I, yeah. I really do like this format. It's exciting. There's a lot of games. I, I think I was saying if you qualify through the TKR, I think you play at least like 20 something custom games, which is awesome. Like it's not just you just play five and then you lose and you're out. It's like if you qualify to the groups, you play at least like 20 something custom games, which is awesome. The fact that everyone, like I said, everyone has a chance to qualify. There's no like, oh, we had a bad day or we had one bad game or whatever. It's like, you know, there's Free none games. of that. You literally have 20 games or whatever in that like losers round one group stage to like play. And if you don't qualify through that, I mean, I don't, you know, you had your chance. So yeah. I mean, look, man. I, I, go ahead, go ahead. I think what's what's cool about this is that it actually gives like some of those teams that didn't come together until the last minute a chance to actually gel. Yeah. Uh, I think it's kind of messed up. The, the the people had a one week notice to essentially gather their team and whatever they got, that's what they got. And it's like if half those teams get, or a little bit more teams get eliminated, then it's like, well, they, they get a little bit less chance to get into final form because then they already get into the elimination bracket or something like that versus at least they get a full opportunity at least a couple more teams where maybe if they have a, a couple bad performances early on it, it won't negatively impact them as harsh as a team that maybe has played together and synergized and already been to the world series of Warzone and players that have already done that they, they've already gotten those reps like destroy i'm pretty confident he can go with a lot of different people and, and he could choose those people and they could perform and, and, and compete. There's people that are calling an open call 
That's not the case. They didn't get invited to nothing. They never play no customs. They don't know what it's like to get beamed by these dudes. So yeah, yeah. I think this is a good opportunity to develop like those people so that by the time we get to finals or something like that, they had full ample time to get their gunny right, their confidence right, and, and get in the situations where they're playing the top of the top, where it can't be mimicked. Not even ranked is going to mimic what yeah. you can experience when you compete at a high level. So I, I think a couple of teams, we saw them today. Uh, you can go back to the other one, um, JD, the, the further one. Um, a lot of teams today kind of uh, found that out the hard way. And I don't know if you guys saw the leaderboard. There was a bunch of teams in there that qualified through the open. And that's fine. I expect them to get smoked off rip. Uh, but they will get better. A lot, people don't realize how crazy different pubs even ranked. I don't care if you're top 10 for ranked. When you go into a custom lobby against the best players in the world... It is a fucking completely different story. And so once you play in these lobbies, and even then, pre playing scrims will play completely different than whenever you go into, uh, like, LAN. I mean, you can ask Destroy. Like, that shit, winning a game on LAN is so different than winning a scrim. Right? Like, like, there's just, there's levels. <laughs> and, bro, I mean, Destroy, how was it winning on LAN last year? Yeah, it was pretty surreal. It was a really good feeling. Um... But yeah, as you said, like, like it's gonna play completely different uh, these customs than obviously like the land will play because. But I think that all these teams should be putting in the the time right now. You know, like with having multiple scrims per day and like multiple tournaments and stuff like that, you're literally offering like free value for these teams to get better. So yeah, um, that way is good. But yeah, it, it feels good. It feels good to win on land. Obviously, it's gonna play a little bit different, but I feel like if you if you play a lot of these custom customs and stuff like that, you can kind of work on your discipline and stuff like that. That's what's really important when it comes to these customs. You know, kind of getting the feel for your teammates. Because as you said, like when this was announced, like I was literally in Toronto, you know, for the major and stuff like that. So it was like some, for for a lot of these teams, like I, unless you're like some of the top teams, uh, obviously, like most of these or a good amount of these teams were uh, formed as of recently. You know, like my team, we've only been playing for like twenty. 20 days like I formed them after I got home from Toronto like I've never really played with Nate Dog before obviously I played with Raul but yeah um stuff like that you know so I think as long as they're getting practice in and stuff like that obviously it's not gonna replicate exactly what it's like on the world series but a lot of these teams are obviously a good amount of these teams are gonna be there so I think yeah. people should be taking practice more serious too if you're not showing up and stuff like that Shit, man. I mean, we're going to see a lot of teams get better over the next two to three months. Um, but, man, I mean, boys, uh, I, that kind of wraps up everything that happened today. It's been a, a crazy, hectic day. A lot of different stuff going on. I will say I love the qualifying system so far. I think it was great. The only thing I would change, the only L in this whole qualifying system is just the open side. That's it. If they can find a way to make the open, the open qualifiers a little bit different, in my opinion, I've always said it, the Fortnite system, their cash cup system that they have where it's integrated into the game and anybody can join, that would be fucking insane. Um, if they did that open quals it, like that, that's the only thing I think they can improve on. But apart from that, I think this is great. The uh, only thing I, could, I would want is just more, right? If this whole sequence was a month and a half long, two months, do this three times a year. I know I'm, I'm begging over here, but you know, uh, but man, boys, yeah. Either way, great day today. Um, big news for World Series. Practice scrims will continue. And then next week, man, we have uh, group stages, bro. But um, is there anything you guys think that we didn't cover before we head out, man? Oh. Negative? Negative? All uh, right, boys. Oh, man. Hey, we're, we're jumping straight into, like, what? When are When's the first customs? Like, when is that? Is it on uh, the 4th? Tuesday. Tuesday. Next week on Tuesday, that's June 4th. June 4th. But okay. we, I, I think we have a... Warzone Total Frenzy on Monday. I don't know for sure because technically that would have been Tuesday, but it might have been pushed to Monday. I'm not too sure. I don't even really know. But if anything, Done. we got the big, if we're talking about War Warzone or, or World Series, Tuesday starts Tuesday through Friday. Hey, starting Tuesday, Beautiful. we got what? Like six weeks of just absolute juicy oh my customs? God. Yeah, on, it's going to be nuts, man. It's going to be nuts. Not just scrims. Hey, the scrims have been lit, but this, there's so much more meaning to these customs, and I'm so excited, bro. It, it's a, oh, yeah. there's a purpose to all of these custom games that are about to happen i'm so fucking excited i'm ready bro uh and you know we're gonna do another tournament or another <laughs> podcast very soon hopefully tomorrow or friday whenever they announce the full team list for those y'all wondering i know 
chat, the teams that were cheating during the open qualifiers, they will get banned, but we got to wait for them to do it. And I'm assuming they're going to yeah. tweet out a list of all the teams that qualified with their respective groups, either tomorrow or Friday or maybe Saturday. I don't know. But whenever they do, we'll do the podcast on the tier list and all that stuff, man. But boys, again, thank you guys so much for hopping on the pod today. Always a pleasure having you. Destroy, appreciate you joining us, man. You know, we have mad love, love for you guys. Everybody. Yes, sir, thank man. You. eBay's J God. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Appreciate you guys. Always. And everybody in the chat, we'll catch you guys later, baby. Peace, peace, peace.